Hi. I had a friend a little bit ago ask me, is this it? Well, I guess it kind of depends on what it is. Is it the end of the world? Well, if that's what it is, then I'll say yes, we are in the end of the world. You see, the, the story of Earth's history has peaked with Jesus and the, our salvation for the, for the whole world has been achieved at the cross. And, and now everything that's happened since has just been wrapped up for the world. So is this virus the end? Um, well, for some, sadly, yes. Uh, but for the rest of us who will continue to s live on to see tomorrow, um, well, we can have a conversation about that. We can see in Matthew chapter 24 that the disciples had a very similar question for Jesus. They, they approached him after he made this statement while leaving the temple. The temple was the, the heart of the nation. It was the, the place where God met with man and uh, that this building represented history and connection and purpose and identity. It, 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 it was the center of their economy. It was the center of, of their world. And when they're leaving the temple, uh, they turn to Jesus and they say, Jesus, look at this beautiful temple. Look at the, the beautiful stones and the magnificence of the architecture. And then Jesus in uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse, verse 2, And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left upon another that will not be thrown down. <gasps> what? This magnificence will be destroyed? They didn't know what to do with that. And so they, they, they were thinking about it, they were probably discussing it, and as they continued on their journey out of the city, they eventually came to the, the hill on the other side of, of Jerusalem. And it says here in verse three, now as, he, as Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, asking, Tell us, when will these things be? When will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Be careful that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and pestilences. Viruses would be included in there. And, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. And he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel, this good news of the kingdom, will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. The disciples were worried about everything that they held dear. But Jesus, he says, you know, these things... The, the end is not yet. It just, it will continue. In fact, it's going to get worse. And what, ask yourself during this, this time when we're um, uh, isolating ourselves and, and our, there's a lot of fear and, and um, a lot of uh, things that we don't know about the future. What we're, when will we get to go back to work? When will we be able to get back to the, the, our normal lives? And ask yourself, what am I worried about when I see these things happening around? Am I worried about a virus? Am I worried about buying and selling? 
Or am I worried about my own soul and, and the eternity of others? I had a friend just this week pass to her rest. We have been friends uh, since I first started pastoring. And we, we became friends and we've been through this journey together um, uh, over 10 years now. Now, my friend Denise, she's, she's a wonderful lady, uh, makes the best garlic bread. <laughs> um, and then I, I, she's been in a, her health has not been very good. And I got a call from the convalescent that she's been in for quite a few months um, that her, that, uh, that early that morning she, she had, she had passed away and and they weren't expecting it uh, she was stable uh, two days before that one I called and and she but she but she died her daughter won't come to visit her her daughter uh, refused to see her when she was in the hospital for the first time and then didn't come to see her in the convalescent. There's some bad, bad history there. And I, it reminds me that, that life is precious, time is short, that we don't know what tomorrow holds, and that today is the acceptable time. Today is the time to, to, to get right, to be in right relationship with, with each other, as well as with God, to take this time and to, to search your heart. And is there something that's pulling me away from God? Is there something that I have not yet given up that is between me and, and my maker? The, it's, it's not about stocking up on canned goods or protective equipment. It's, it's about searching your own heart during this time. I, I think about um, a car that a car, uh, no matter how, how nice it runs, uh, no matter how new it is, uh, no matter how, how much stuff I put into it or how much it costs, someday that car is going to break down. Now, if, if something happens with the, the radiator or with the carburetor or with the spark plugs, the starter, I, I I don't say, oh, I better, it's the end of the life of this car, it's, it's done. No, you know, you put some attention into it, you put some money into having it repaired, you put some, make sure you keep it ma uh, maintained, but it, it's not the end of the car, it's just, it's, it's a sign that it's getting older and you need to put some more uh, money and attention into it. Um, when I look at my body, I, I see the, the way that it's functioning and and it it seems to be working fine but then if, if i if my hand starts cramping i don't say oh, is this it is this it is my is my life over uh, no the, my hand's starting to cramp and i need to exercise it i need to stretch it instead of on my being on my throne it's probably something to do with my thumb um uh, but if i start getting tingling down my left arm if, if I start feeling numbness in, in this appendage, if I feel a tightness in my chest, a shortness of breath, oh, I better go see the, the, the medical professionals. I need to go to the emergency room. I need to pop an aspirin and go. Um, now, for uh, the same thing with the virus that's going around, it, do we, if, if I start feeling sick, um, do I do I jump into the car and I or get on public transit and get to the hospital and and ask for a, a testing kit? Uh, not necessarily. I don't want to infect other people and I don't want to get something worse. But um, I'll just I'll handle it while I'm at home. I'll drink plenty of water. I'll try and get some sunlight and some good fresh air and I'll I'll ride this virus out. But if I have some underlying health conditions. If, if I uh, start having a shortness of breath, if, if I start getting a fever that's over 102 degrees, if, if, I'm, if, it's, if I have complications already with my health, I'd better go immediately and go to the, go to the doctor um, 
and and get not just tested but but treated as well because those are signs that something's much more than just a, a mild flu that I might be enduring. Um, these are signs of of things breaking down. A car is made by man, so someday it will break down. My body is is made by God, designed by God, but it's riddled with sin and and Doritos. <laughs> and uh, the world has its own systems, just like we have systems in our body. We, we have uh, we have the natural world. We have the governmental, the governments of the world. We we have different. We have communication systems and 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 uh, hospital systems and all these things. These are these are made. They're made by man or or their nature made by God or. But it it's a world that's full of sin. It's a it's a world that has uh, suffering and and infection with with selfishness and so someday the world will end is that now we have a virus we have to stay home the the hospitals are inundated with cases and they're doing the best they can but is this the end it's a sign it's a sign that stuff's going on but be not alarmed as jesus said these are the beginning of sorrows and will continue to go into these 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 birthing pains, so to speak. That that these things that happen in the world that are are closer and closer together and more and more intense. And so, where are we going to be putting our trust? We see in Genesis, right in the beginning, when God created uh, us, He gave us life. He gave us um, our, our bodies. He breathed into us uh, the breath of life, and we became a living soul. And, and we have this life, but then after sin, then we, he says, from dust you were created, to dust you will return. And the world was created out of chaos. From chaos, he brought order, and he, he brought uh, structure and, and systems. But then from chaos, we, the earth was created to chaos. It will return. And we see these signs of, of this turmoil, but where are we going to put our trust? Where do we put our trust? We put our trust in the one who, who made us, and we put our trust in the one that promised, the one that promised that he will be with us, the one that promised that, that he sees us in our, in our struggles and in our fears. He, he, he promised that he, he cares about us, and he promised that he hears us when we talk to him and that he will act. We can put our trust in him. These are the, but the, the beginning of sorrows. And so we will put our trust in the one that has made us and the one that has promised to be with us, even to the very end. It's, it's not about stocking up or preparing your house for, for big, big disasters. It's about preparing your, your heart, searching your heart today, to being ready every day, to being in re right relationship with God every day, whether there's a pandemic or not, we are in right relationship with God and we trust in Him. I want to pray with you, uh, for you during this time. Um, if you'd like to pray, if you'd like me to pray about something, you can send me a message or you can make comments down below so other people can pray for those things too. Um, during this time, we are together uh, over the internet and in, in, over the phone lines because we want to be in, in relationship with each other, encouraging each other on in times like these. So um, let's turn our trust into the one that we can trust, that the one that holds the future. Let's pray. God, thank you for the promise that is in your son, Jesus. The one that has, has created the, the, the solution for eternity. The one that is giving us life. And the one that will hold us through no matter what's ahead. God, we put our trust in you because you're the one that hears us. You're the one that, that sees us and you're the one that cares. Um, God, may we put our trust in you each and every day. May we walk by faith. May we walk in relationship with you. 
I ask and pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. May God bless you all.